Hi everyone, welcome back to the Echo Pod. I'm Quincel, one of the Echo Program Coordinators, and to my right we have... What is up everyone? My name is Kevin Sunga. I am the Echo Equity and COVID and Health Outcomes Program Director, and then to my far left is... <laughs> Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Dr. Freddie Ray Ray. I'm a critical care pharmacist and also the creator of Traumacist Rx, which is a YouTube channel, IG, and TikTok um, social media platform where you can learn about health literacy and improve your health knowledge. Awesome. Today's episode will be about allergies and mitigation. So should we start out by, we're going to get into the details, but should we start about start talking about what we actually take for allergies? Yeah, like what's your allergy stack? What is it looking like? <laughs> Bam! <laughs> what? So, 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 so what do you mean got? today? You, 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 this is like uh, a show okay, and tell so, moment right now. Um, I have two of the same medication, but I don't take it double. I just wanted to make a point that so most of the time I take Allegra, yeah. but I found out at Costco they have Allerfex, which is way cheaper, and it's the same medication, Fexofenadine. Um, yeah, once a day. All right. Next. Nice. I like yours. <laughs> Quintel, would you like to go next? Mine is Sertirazine, which is the same as Zyrtec. And then I have Aller Flow, which has Fluticasone Propionate. I don't know if I said that correctly. But it's a spray, and then you just do one spray each nostril. And then I have Vapo Inhaler. Yes. You got the Forbidden Inhaler. (laughs) 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 All Filipinos have this in their households. In different forms, like the rub or this. Yeah. Vix cures everything. Yeah. Um, 100%, 100% yeah. proven. I don't, I don't want to spread any misinformation. Yeah. Doesn't cure that everything. That was not makes pharmacist approved. Yeah. <laughs> that statement was not approved. Um, my stack is actually pretty small. So it's, what's crazy is I didn't really get allergies until I moved here to Stockton. Oh. Yeah. Actually, same. Yeah. yeah. So you're the same way, too. It's, yeah. um, and we're going to talk about that, too, is about the air quality here. Um, but this is my stack. It's a little uh, Vix um, vapor of candy lozenge, which zooms I think it's in. yeah it zooms in. <laughs> Here you go. Which I'm actually gonna take because um, I'm uh, my throat's kind of irritated today. Um, but no, it, it is kind of wild. Like um, I'm sorry, actually, because of allergies, I'm actually starting to take a little bit of what you've presented. Um, and I actually was prescribed um, some meds uh, through Kaiser. Um, so yeah, no, my, my stack is not as you know robust as yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, that, that is the reality for a lot of residents here. Yeah, um, yeah. I think that there's so many different options, both over the counter prescriptions, things that aren't well studied, you know, mm-hmm. home remedies. And today, I think we want to start off by introducing allergies, how to treat it for the most part, and um, what causes them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the other thing I forgot to bring actually was, I think it's Visine, like the eye drops. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, that I do have in my backpack. I'm sorry, I forgot it. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> we have Visine. Vi- we, we have Visine. Oh, we have Visine. Hey. hey. <laughs> That's not how you take it. But. If you want wow, to. Wow, okay, we all have our allergies. All right, stuff. so, yeah, I mean, so as you can tell, in a sample size of four people, including Narang, mm-hmm. our tech person over here who helps us out with everything tech master it's a a hundred percent population we're all affected on this podcast um 100 but on a serious note um many of the people that listen to our podcast um are affected by allergies and so quincel do you want to kind of kick it off with what allergies are yeah so there's allergies that are non-allergic and allergic And we have, so allergies are also called allergic rhinitis or hay fever. And it's a condition when allergens are triggers such as pet fur, pollen, dust mites, dust, or other foreign chemicals such as perfumes or smoke or like the air quality make their way into our airway and interact with our body's immune system, which leads us to a variety of symptoms that Dr. Freddie will go into. Yeah, so some of the most common symptoms that you at home probably feel when you have allergies are like congestion, sneezy, itchy eyes, runny nose, you know, that post-nasal drip, which can actually cause sore throat, um, coughing, and even fatigue, which is something that's not really like a physical symptom, but more mental. So you're not with it every day, or you know, you kind of have some brain fog, which we talked about with COVID, mm-hmm. but can actually happen with allergies. Yeah. And then what's the other type of... 
rhinitis. So there's like oh, non-allergic. so non-allergic. So non-allergic rhinitis has some of the same symptoms as allergic rhinitis, but the only thing is, um, the only difference is that when these patients go to talk to their healthcare provider, they can't figure out what the trigger is. So oh. randomly they'll have these symptoms and it won't be allergy season or they'll do allergy tests such as like an IgE test which can you can test for like oh I'm allergic to peanuts I'm allergic to pollen that sort of thing will all be negative which means they're not allergic to anything yeah. some other causes of like non-allergic rhinitis that we aren't going to go into detail today but just for an FYI some people might have problems with their like nasal cavities where they'll require surgery or sometimes the vessels in their nose might tighten up or or cause them to have a sensation of congestion. So, yeah. And Freddie, and I know you both talked about a little bit of the symptoms. You know, what I'm hearing is congestion, sneezing, itchy eyes, runny nose, post-nasal drip, fatigue, coughing. Um, you know, spring season is upon us, um, and, you know, allergy season is kicking up. Um, but what's really tough to differentiate is between cold, flu, and also, like, allergies. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So some of the major yeah. things that are different between cold, flu, and allergy, or COVID, cold, flu, and allergies has to do with fever. Fever and chills is the biggest indication or most common indication for an infection. Yeah. So whether you have COVID or the cold, you're more likely to have a fever. So, you know, when you check your temperature, it's above, you know, like 9,900 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. Uh, whereas with allergies, you might have some of the other similar symptoms that we talked about, cough, congestion, that sort of thing. Another thing that might be um, common is that with allergies, they only happen at certain times of the year for certain people. So we talk about the different seasons and we'll talk about what sorts of allergens are in those seasons in a second. Um, but with the cold, it can usually happen year round. Yeah. So depending on you know what, sor what sorts of viruses are flying around, you know, RSV, we have COVID, um, respiratory syncytial virus, which is RSV, um, yeah. metanumovirus, the common flu. Depending on what sort of season we're in, you might see it at a time when you're not actually having allergies. Yeah. And also allergy medication will help hopefully resolve the symptoms of allergies, whereas if you take Allegra for a cold, it's not gonna help you. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. I guess one more difference, I guess now that I just thought about it, is with a cold, it's usually gone within you know five to 14 days, whereas allergies, it's constant. Every day, it's the same symptoms. And if you don't treat it or you don't find ways to get rid of the triggers, mm -hmm. then you're gonna have your allergy symptoms. Okay. Yeah. So from your stack, I know you presented your amazing stacks. <laughs> if you wanna show it to the audience. Yeah, I wanna show it to the audience yeah, again. So, you know, oh, with, <laughs> I know little maracas of pills. Um, so let's say, you know, I guess this is going to be sort of an offhand question for you, Freddie. Yeah. And then also from experience, if you know Quincel, but let's say if I have a cold and I take, you know, I take uh, like Allerflow, it's allergy relief med, will there be any um, adverse effects? Adverse effects. So as far as I can tell, I mean, not necessarily. Yeah. I'd say that it would definitely help dry up your nose, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, some adverse effects that I do notice when people do take nasal sprays, for instance, mm -hmm. is sometimes they point the nasal spray th into their nose and they, they snort it really like hard and mm -hmm. the medication can go into their nose or into their throat and cause them to have irritation. So that's one of the things that is most common with that medication. Yeah. Another thing is some people don't clean the tip of the nasal spray. So you can actually take off the nasal spray tip and like wash it off with soap and water. Um, but as far as like cold and flu and that sort of thing, it won't necessarily help unless you have like allergies on top of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So usually for cold and flu, I know we're kind of getting on a slight tangent. When you have congestion in your nose or something like that, you might want to use a, like a decongestant. So like Tylenol cold and flu. Yeah. That has um, guaifenesine in it. Yeah, guaifenesine will help loosen up the mucus, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, Dextromethorphan will help with the coughing. So that's kind of different. It's a different pathway of treating different things. So cold is kind of a different sort of monster than allergies. Um, really quick. So the nasal sprays like fluticasone, which is the Allerflow, that's a steroid. So it will help relax the muscles in the nasal passage. Yeah. No, no. Thanks for clearing that up. No, yeah, no, that's yeah. a great question. I think before we actually dive into the treatments and stuff, should we talk about seasonality? Like what sorts of allergens happen in each season? Yeah. I think it'd be great to talk about. And while we're kind of like getting those notes together, um, yeah. I have allergies year round. I don't know about Ooh. you guys. Uh, How just in the spring? <laughs> well, like moving yeah. here when I discovered it, 
I think it started in the fall for me, mm-hmm. and then it became more apparent in the spring. Okay, so it's do you consider that year round, or is it just it starts in the fall, mm-hmm. the summer you take a break? Yeah, the summer not so much, Got it. but that's why like I didn't know if I if I had a cold or not or allergies because it was new to me like oh. after moving here, and then as the years went on, I'm like okay, there's a pattern. So it's like starting in the fall when it's colder weather and then springtime got it yeah yeah the winter i feel like it kind of takes a break maybe because i'm indoors more <laughs> when oh, it's cold okay. yeah. but yeah i think my triggers are usually like from the outdoors yeah like pollen yeah yeah definitely how about you kevin uh no what i'm learning is mostly spring like, mostly spring it's mostly spring but <clears throat> i'm new to the game when it comes to allergies <laughs> Um, it's welcome. Thank you very welcome. much. Uh, I feel indoctrinated being here in the Central <laughs> Valley. Um, it's it's it is the spring. Um, but wood burnings do irritate my my nose. Um, yeah, you said wood burning. Wood burning. Oh, yeah. So okay. there's. Um, I know it, it kind of ties in with sort of like I know allergies is its own sort of category, mm-hmm. but even like pollutants who yeah. you know that that really affect you know the air quality that yeah. you know for those who are who already have like you know asthma or who are already sensitive to allergies. Yeah. You know, they, they could react, you know, sometimes violently to it. So for me, um, especially during the winter time, now I moved to um, I moved to a neighborhood where wood burning is very prevalent um, because there's just usually smaller homes. So it's more economical to uh, burn wood. Okay. And so, yeah, for me, like I couldn't stay outside too much. Um, so I guess that's the environmental factor to also for me to keep track of, you know, and to just, you know, be mindful of. Um, but it's it's spring. I, l- I lucked in. I really have. So, uh, yeah, for, 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 for the for the year round, like, no, I feel your pain because, like, my fiance is the same way. Like, yeah. she she's a, she takes probably all of this. Oh, you wow. Know, just to just to make sure that she that she runs. OK, got it. Yeah. yeah. For me, I mean, we'll go through a list of seasons and what yeah. to expect for each mm-hmm. like allergy sort of situation. But, yeah, for me, if I don't take Allegra like year round and I mean, I do give myself kind of like a like an allergy medication vacation like once a week I won't take my or on the weekends if I don't have symptoms I'm not going to take it yeah. one that saves money and two that kind of helps clear it out of my system and yeah. you know kind of see like where I'm at like at baseline so mm-hmm. anyways that's yeah. really like expert advice not really but yeah. that's what I do personally yeah. um, year round like in the colder weather usually I don't have that many allergies but if I'm indoors or I'm in or, you know I'm doing something whether it's dusty or something like that my allergies will just cut, wake back up just kick back in yeah yeah so it must have been really hard for you during the wildfire season oh yeah like um and also an interesting fact is um you know i had adult onset asthma so like as a kid you know it was as a kid i think i was diagnosed with asthma but then it kind of just like subsided it doesn't really go away right it's just kind of you know you have your periods it, yeah, because it's a chronic disease. Um, and it wasn't until I moved here where it really got exacerbated and I had to get emergency inhalers, um, you know, because it just, I just, I didn't feel like I needed it. Um, so, yeah, during wildfire season, I, I was very, like, it was very irritated. Like, even uh, that huge fire that happened in Paradise, California, a couple of years ago, and it was traveling all the way here, all the way to the Bay. Um, and it looked nearly apocalyptic with, you know, the oh, sun yeah. being blocked out. Oh, yeah. Um, and the know, ash falling from the yeah, that was scary. That yeah. was like a volcano movie, but that, no, it's yeah. It's but that's just, true. It's yeah, true. I mean, you can see all the ash everywhere. You're yeah. breathing it in, and it's yeah. like oh, that's amidst the pandemic. Too. Yeah, and yeah, during yeah. the pandemic, so I kind of upgraded from like a regular mask to like cans at that time, mm-hmm. even yeah. though it wasn't really like a popular thing to do, yeah, uh, or a common thing to do, just to help like decrease the amount of debris getting into my lungs and stuff like that. Yeah. So going off of that, like based on our research yep. for Northern California region. So during the winter time, there's indoor allergens like dust, pet dander, mold, cockroaches, and the cooler months that come about. And then during the springtime, that marks the beginning of tree allergy season. And then during the summer, there's grass allergy season. And the fall, there's weeds allergy season. That explains a lot. <laughs> I know. I know if you put it into the cycle of seasons, it makes sense. Like winter season, I didn't even think about like indoor allergens like dust, pet dander. 
is because our pets have to be indoors. You know, that's true. Yeah, yeah. or you're a factor. You're less likely to open your windows, so things kind of can accumulate, or like yes. you know, with like severe weather and it's raining, bugs and and that sort of thing can like, crawl in. Are more crawling, like more likely to crawl into your spaces, or where you work and things like yeah. that, or even like if you go to a restaurant that sort of thing yeah. like other sorts of things that don't usually go in indoors will come indoors yeah, yeah the ventilation is all kept inside yeah or even like when the weather is you know wet wetter you're like more likely to get mold yeah like, you know so true. or like leaky yeah. pipes and that sort of thing um so it's definitely something that i usually don't think about but now kind of like talking this through with you guys and that sort mm-hmm. of thing it's like something that i'm kind of like aware of like mm-hmm. oh maybe i should just double check this yeah yeah it makes me think like do i invest in air filters you know yeah. there's that there's that huge thing like you know there's there's different air filters and like also shout out to dawn team to the decreasing asthma within neighborhoods yes that team um <clears throat> and just to uplift their work what they do is they do home assessments um and it's usually a phased program um where uh residents get to you know get surveyed and um you know like after doing sort of a house assessment they um, provide an air filter, um, you know, and it's a small one. I mean, it's a small one, but it, it does really good work. We have one in our home, um, and it's a good quality one as well. But some things to consider, especially during the winter season. Yeah. Yeah, and there's uh, larger ones that are coming out there. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that later of, like, the AB617 work, cool. um, which is, like, reducing uh, pollution, um, specifically um, in high pollutant areas, like here in the Central Valley. There's a lot of measures um, done by uh, community-based organizations like ourselves, as with uh, in partnership with um, California Air Resource Board and uh, San Joaquin Valley um, Air District. So I could talk about that a little bit more. But um, what you're saying of you know of all these seasons is um, is just stay prepared and stay equipped. Have your yeah. yeah, I think to go along with that, you know, the number one thing to get rid of your allergies is to take away the triggers. <laughs> So kind of like we talked about in other conversations with asthma, like remove the triggers. It's the same thing with with allergies in a way because it's affecting. So the way it works with allergies is your triggers, so pet dander, pollen, whatever it is, will activate your immune system, causing you to release what we call histamine, which causes all the symptoms that we just talked about. And so... Number one thing, get rid of your tr- or get rid of the trigger. So air filter is a great way- thing to do. You know, have your house inspected for any mold or that sort of thing. Yeah. Clean regularly, or you know, if you know you're in a season where you're going to have allergies, clean before that season or even like year round. You know. Um, yeah. So and if that doesn't work, we need to move on to maybe something else. So medication wise, histamine's the thing that's created to create and is created by your allergens and that causes all the symptoms mm. to get rid of histamine you use medications called antihistamines mm. Ooh. These. that's intense These. so the anti anti are you ready to get yeah. into it or <laughs> you, you, i guess was, yeah yeah so antihistamines there's two different types yeah. the sleepy ones and the non-sleepy ones so yeah. the sleepy ones that we know of are like benadryl so one of the most common medications that we do see treated for allergies kind of like incorrectly would be Benadryl. So why would we not use Benadryl first line? Uh, number one, it can make people very, very sleepy. So if you operate a motor vehicle, you know, you have to study for class or anything like that. If you're taking Benadryl first thing in the morning, you're going to be sleepy the whole day or drowsy. Um, so that's the sleepy one, but there's not sleepy ones, luckily. So going in order of like maybe the first line one you might want to try is Claritin or Loratadine. Second line would probably be something like Allegra or um, Fexofenadine. So here, just kind of like a side note, <clears throat> I have Allerfex from Costco, sponsor us, no, I'm just kidding. Um, For real, but yeah. if you just look at the generic name, so this is Allegra, which costs maybe like two times more than Allerfex or even like yeah. the Target brand or Up and Up or whatever CVS brand. So double check with your pharmacist or physician, like what is the, gen- the uh, generic name? Because they're the same medication. It's just one costs more than the other. Yeah. So anyways, <clears throat> so the second line. Um, yeah, usually most people will start on Claritin. I, I would say that they're kind of all on the same playing field, but mm-hmm. Claritin is like the most mild. So a lot of children will get started on Claritin first because it's a low dose. It comes in a liquid formulation, so it's mm-hmm. easy for people to swallow. It also comes in like a dissolvable tablet so if the kid doesn't know how to swallow tablets but they don't want liquid because it doesn't taste good to them Mm -hmm. they can put the little um, dissolvable tablet under their tongue so that's claritin Uh, this is um, 
fexofenadine, which is Allegra, and then the third one is the one that you take, which is Zyrtec or Cetirizine. So there's four medications right there that you can try. Um, a lot of people will start with like Claritin, and if that doesn't work for a while, they'll switch to something else. Some studies are kind of iffy on if that's even helpful, but go for it and try it. There's a lot of different doses. There's like once a day, twice a day, that sort of thing. Yeah, because yeah, I spoke with an allergist when I first got allergies coming to the Central Valley. So they did start me off with Claritin, but then, then I think there was like Claritin and then Claritin D. Right, yeah, so yeah. So what's the biggest difference? Yeah, so Claritin D has an extra ingredient um, that's now leaving my brain. <laughs> but basically, uh, it's another decongestant that helps um, not only with the allergies, but with like the stuffy nose and that sort of thing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Because that was the first one they had me try, and then it didn't work out as well. And then I was alternating between Allegra and Zyrtec, but Zyrtec is cheaper for me, so... Oh, I see. Tech. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. That's something to also think about, too. And if you don't want me asking, was your, like, is that covered under, like, your insurance? Yeah. Yeah. So we have over-the-counter medications, but if you want to save more money, exactly. see if you can get it covered under your insurance, which yeah. most of these medications can. You just have to ask your pharmacy team, hey, can we just double check if my insurance covers that? Yeah. And usually they can double check. It takes usually a few minutes. Um, I got a question, Freddie. Yeah. Why why is there a drowsy <clears throat> excuse me why is there a drowsy option when it comes to allergy meds? Yeah, yeah. so <clears throat> it's not that we made these options, but Benadryl yeah. is a way older medication than the non-drowsy ones. So yeah. how we learned it in school is there's first generation antihistamines and second generation antihistamines. Mm -hmm. So the first generation ones are usually have more side effects for every medication class. Yeah. Uh, Benadryl just so happens to be one that its formulation is more sleepy, and that probably has to do with one of the chemical compounds in it. Um, but labs and scientists after that figured out a way to make that better, like the receptor or whatever, yeah. that decreases histamine, less sleepy. Okay. Yeah, so okay. without getting into too much sciencey stuff, that was good. that's yeah. kind of, you're kind of clipping the bad parts of Benadryl and yeah. into these. That's kind of how I would think about it. Even though it probably isn't 100% accurate, yeah. it's the thought process. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting to know because you would think like you would want like the most efficient, right? Like, you know, like there's a sleepy option, but it's like a lot of us in this age, we use machinery, yeah. like whether you're driving or whether, I mean, like we're on our phones all the time too. Right, so right. You're, you're doing something. So you would think that that would kind of be phased out. So it's interesting that it's still with us, but probably because it's a very effective medication. Well, yeah. So yeah. kind of like going back to Benadryl really quick. I mean, it's with us because it also it helps with allergies, but it also yeah. helps with people who have like allergic reactions, like hives and all that uh, stuff. Yeah. And then also kind of like a saving money tip here coming up. <laughs> For those of you that take Benadryl or take um, those z yeah. that's just Benadryl. Oh. But it's rebranded as a sleeping a medication. Now. Yeah. So, instead of <laughs> instead all of Benadryl. These so if you look at the store right now and you look at yeah. diphenhydramine, which is Benadryl, the generic brand is like mm. two bucks for 50 tablets. Yeah. Whereas the Z-Quil, which will help people fall asleep, but they don't care about the allergy portion, it's mm -hmm. like 10 bucks for 50. So you kind of got to think about it like that. Like, look at the generic. So I kind of just saved everybody some money here. If you take z or you need something to sleep and you have Benadryl at home, it's the same 25 milligrams a night is the usual dose. Yeah. Yeah. And then going off of your question, it made yeah. me think of like how having seasonal allergies and or allergic rhinitis affects our physical and psychological well-being. So mm -hmm. by us taking the drowsy one, like it can some way help us with our sleep quality yeah. because yeah, potentially allergic rhinitis does affect or reduce your sleep quality yeah, with all the symptoms that you have. Like you wake up in the middle of the night, like having a coughing fit, but mm -hmm. then when you take these meds, like you can have good quality sleep. Yeah. So that's actually a benefit of taking Benadryl over the other ones. Yeah. So if you take it, your allergy yeah. medicine at night, help you fall asleep. And also mm -hmm. if your allergy symptoms are worse at night, bam, you can kind of take care of it like two, Two birds with one stone sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I feel like I was going to say something, but not. Oh, um, so those that's first-line therapy, the antihistamines, the yeah. oral ones. Um, I noticed that you brought the Flonase, which we talked about, or the Fluticazone. Mm -hmm. So some people will be on a combo thing. So depending on your symptoms, if you have, like, runny nose, in addition to all the other stuff and you have itchy eyes, usually... People with runny nose and itchy eyes, they find relief from not only taking an oral medication, but also the nasal spray. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And can I borrow your thing for one yeah. second? I do both. When she I cleaned have it, so if you're going to use it, No, I'm not going to use it. But <laughs> I'm just kidding. Counseling tip. I have a yeah. new one, too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> counseling tips. Um, you can take off this tip and wash it with soap and water and just put it back on. If you're using a new one for the first time, you want to spray it into the air to prime it at least three to five times. Or if you're not using it every three months or something like that, or every two months, you might want to just prime the medication. So oh, you know, three you, times? I think I only did yeah. two, two or three times. Okay. That's fine. I mean, in I the like, pharmacy, you'll see I different variations it, of that. So. But you should prime it so that way, you know, the medication is, is getting through the, the tip of the okay. medication. Okay. Another thing is, so... Our nose is kind of separated by a septum, like the middle. Yeah. You want to angle. tilt, angle it so it's on the outer part. Okay. So the outer parts of your the inner nose are like mucous membranes. So it's kind of like where the medication will get absorbed the most. I've noticed that people, when they spray this, they have a fast snort, like <laughs> or something like that. But oh, man. <laughs> oh no. I don't have like we do not contone that. But what you should do is really just like breathe in normally. So you spray and breathe. And ironically, it smells like flowers. If you've ever, if you've never taken this, it smells like flowers. It does. <laughs> so I'm just gonna be like super frank here. I've been taking yeah. this incorrectly That's for the okay. last so like, two years. This is the a year. This is why you should get counseling advice or like always you, talk buddy. to your healthcare team to see if you're taking things right. Yeah. So people yeah. take medications forever, but they, sometimes they forget how to take it, and yeah. that's where mistakes can happen. So yeah. that's just a quick counseling tip. So so you shoot it up. Yeah, no, because I, 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 I treat it like saline spray, but maybe I'm oh. even taking saline spray incorrectly. I I'm just angle. like, oh yeah, I just yeah, go. angle it so angle it so it's towards the outside. Mm -hmm. And some people even yeah. recommend like rubbing the nose closed yeah. like this, oh. so that way you spread the medication around. Okay. Wow, massage it's, your nose. It's like a carnival game that I try to play. You know, you know, like the thing that you try to hit. And, oh. and so no, it's, it should just stay right. in the tip of your nose. Then, if you're yeah. if you're feeling the medication go all the way to the back to your throat. Yeah. You snorted too, <laughs> too hard. Bad, too bad. Or, too or bad. You, you're, you're aiming, too hard you're aiming way too far up there. Okay. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, because you want it to be absorbed into your system. And the easiest way is through uh -huh. the tip of your nose. Okay. And I know, That's like, know. in the Thanks, directions, guys. it says if it's, like, your first time taking it, you want to do, like, two sprays in each nostril for the right, first yeah. one to two weeks. And then yeah. you taper off. Why do you taper off? Yeah, so... There's a couple of reasons why. With steroids, they can build up in your body. So this isn't a this isn't a large dose, and it's it topical. It's not. Oh. It's okay. kind of like on your skin, quote unquote. But like, we notice that with steroids, you don't always be on such a high dose all the time. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the times, the the part that sucks is when someone's not on medication and they have allergies. Their immune system is really really overreacting so you have all these histamine signaling and all that stuff it's all built up so you take a higher dose to kind of let it let it kind of cool off and then once you're out your immune system and everything's kind of cooled off you can kind of taper off or lower the dose okay. yeah okay. that's one way of doing it some people might do one spray in each nostril first and then escalate or de-escalate okay. it just depends on on you and your pharmacist and physician okay yeah. so we're We've been talking a lot about treatments. Mm -hmm. What about some unique things? Which kind of mentioned Vicks. Oh, yes. Vicks. For me? <laughs> oh, yeah, like, like home remedy-ish. Like yeah. What we've seen in our culture. It's actually really interesting. Right, right, Dive right. into that. Yeah, so yeah. if you're listening to this and a lot of Filipino families have that little Vicks jar growing up. And if you're cold, if you have a cold, they'll rub it on your chest or under your nose. And you'll your immediately back. notice, or your back, and you'll immediately notice a relief yeah. in your congestion, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so kind of like same thing. You have that one. You had a cough drop. Yeah. I whenever Vicks I have some well. congestion, brand. I use like mints. Yeah. So why does this work, right? Some studies, um, some small studies have shown that menthol, which is kind of like the chemical compound in mints, mm -hmm. actually when you either ingest it or the menthol kind of rises and, and you breathe it in, it will activate the cool receptor, the cooling receptors on your tongue and in your airway. Oh. And that kind of gives you a, like a sensation that like cold air is kind of relieving your sort of airway. It's so soothing. It's a very it's soothing, a soothing feeling. feeling. Um, but it's temporary. Obviously, it's not something that will work like Allegra or something like that. So it is a temporary thing. Yeah. Um, but some people do find that relief with that. And it's not necessarily something that will make you sleepy mm -hmm. or has any like crazy side effects as long as you don't like overdose and 
put a whole jar of Vicks in your yeah. nose or something like that, <laughs> which would kind of be burning. Stick it up the whole day. Yeah, I know. Just leave it there. So that was just a, something interesting. I always thought, like, why do mints kind of, like, help my allergies? This is before I took allergy medication. Mm. And I was like, oh, it's because you know, cooling receptors in your airway actually get activated and kind of give you that sensation. It doesn't necessarily always clear your airway, yeah. Yeah. but it gives you the sensation that it's happening. Okay. It's, oh, okay. Yeah, because all of them say, like, non-medicated, but... Right, right, yeah. right. It's like in... Like a herbal thing, or like um, like homeopathic, homeopathic. There you go. In that realm. Yeah. yeah. So I thought that was interesting. Kind of a fun fact. So these are the twenty-four hour relief, and these are like ten-minute relief. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> like <laughs> man, my allergy. <laughs> like I, I have a meeting. I have to go to class right now. I just uh-huh. need something real quick to help me. I'll say that it's okay. Like sometimes allergy medications don't work in a 24 sometimes it might the dose might not get absorbed appropriately so it might be something to talk about your physician about adding one or two things and and one of them will be scheduled and the other one will be like as needed okay yeah Yeah, so that's just another thing um yeah Yeah. so you don't build like drug resistance to it if you no. so i think what you're talking about is a term called tachyphylaxis where like the receptors kind of like go away Mm -hmm. yeah so in this case no i based on the studies i've seen people will take long-term allergy medications and be okay with it Mm -hmm. um so you don't need to switch like every six months okay i'm gonna do claritin from february to summer and then Mm -hmm. from summer to winter i'm gonna do allegra and then kind of like (laughs) i need to reset my body body. no it's actually better to just be consistent with your medications yeah if you find it's not working after Mm -hmm. maybe like a month maybe i would consider switching see if that works within the month and if that doesn't work you might want to talk to your physician about prescription allergy medications adding two things so one that attacks through the nose and one that you take orally. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's also, yeah, like I said, prescription medications that might also help. Yeah, and like the one the wrong has for your eyes. Yeah, so there's also different ways to attack it. So, yeah. So I hope that was helpful. Um, yes, very This is probably like, we can go into so much detail with allergies. <laughs> I know. It's like. We're we, in season right now. <laughs> we are. In, we're in season right now. And it's just wild because, you know, we, we try to make it like one podcast episode, but it's just such a big topic and relevant for our community. Yeah that it's probably going to be a two episode which i think is going to be the case for this one right We're probably gonna have another or episode yeah. multi episode thing yeah. um talking about actually i'm not quite sure but yeah. well i think the one thing we wanted to talk about is you know we talked about the clinical component of it um but also you know to go more in depth in the triggers like you know the environmental you know portion of it cuz you know a huge part of our work is environmental justice you know planting trees um and trees kind of work twofold with our community like you know like creates allergies um <laughs> but also um you know there, there's that long time uh, of, of reducing emissions you know right so it kind of works twofold so I, I think that's part of the conversation we want to introduce like next okay. but at least right now while people are getting hit with allergies left and right like we definitely want to um get you equipped to how can you treat your allergies and can you what can you distinguish so appreciate you freddie and cool. quinzel for driving that so stay tuned for that part two i think yeah. that that would be an interesting episode um so kind of to summarize before you wrap up we have take away all the triggers to your allergies and we have over-the-counter medications see mm-hmm. if you could save money by just using the generic versus the brand ones and then talk to your physician and team if you think you need to optimize your therapy well, thank you for, I appreciate you, Freddie. Thank you. This is awesome. This is great. All right. Are we signing off? Is this what's going on yes, right now? Yes. So yeah. sad. It's always a fun time with you. I know. <laughs> yeah. It's always a great time with Cleve. Yeah. All right. Uh, any last minute things? Like and subscribe to Trauma Star X. There you go. Plug. <laughs> and at Echo Little Manila. And I got yes. nothing. So thank you very much. We hope to see you for the next episode. Don, do we need to put oh, Don stuff Don. in the description maybe? I don't know. You know what? Yes. Okay. We did on, do an episode yeah. about AB six one seven and also the asthma mitigation program. Okay. So okay. Tune we'll into that episode. <laughs> no, we're, we're going to drop a little Manila Stockton. That's going to capture all the programs that we do. Um, so I guess I'll plug in that last one. Yeah. Okay. Well, right. I hope you like this episode. Thanks for listening to the Echo Podcast. Echo, Echo, Echo Pod. Echo, 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 Echo. Echo. See y'all next Thank time. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye.